Hey guys, Marilyn here. So today I wanted to do a take two on glass etching with the Cricut Joy. Now I'm not quite sure what happened in the last video whereas I lost the sound um, because when I recorded the video it was perfectly fine. So somewhere in the upload it lost its volume. Um, somewhere in the transition, the buffering, wherever. Um, because when I played back the video, which I normally play back my videos before I upload them, um, it, the volume was perfectly fine. So I apologize for that. And to those of you that were so kind about it, thank you so much for your kind words and your patience. So I'm going to try this again. Um, this I'm recording this on my Samsung Note 10 Plus. I've never had a problem recording videos on my Samsungs. But we're going to do a take two. So... We're going to go ahead and do glass etching with the Cricut Joy. Now, if you could do it on the Cricut Joy, you can do it on the Explorer. You can do it on the Explorer Air, the Air 2, and the Cricut Maker. If you have a Silhouette machine, you can also do it on a Silhouette as well. Any die cutting machine that you have. Okay, so the first thing you want to have is your Armor Etch Solution. So this is what eats into the glass and permanently etches the glass once you've created your decal. So this is the solution that we will be putting on the decal uh, to get your image to be permanently etched onto the glass. The next thing you'll wanna have is you wanna have a foam brush. You wanna have some masking tape to mask off your design so it's nicely uh, secured on the glass but also you're covering most of the glass so you don't get any etching solution anywhere on the glass. Um, another thing, your glass of course. You also want to make sure you have some alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is an essential item that I always keep in my craft room. I do use rubbing alcohol for cleaning as well. Um, sometimes if I'm wiping down my my desktops or if I've worked with rhinestones, gluing rhinestones or paper crafting and I get adhesive on my mats, I just put rubbing alcohol on the cotton ball and rub off the adhesive. You'll also want to rub your cup down to where you're going to apply your decal because um, you want to make sure you don't have any fingerprints or anything on the glass. Um, so you want to make sure it's nice and clean, the alcohol has dissipated from the glass, so then you can go ahead and apply your decal and your etching solution. So um, then, of course, your little cutting mat for your Cricut Joy. And then you also want to make sure that you have a good vinyl. Um, so I'm using the Cricut Permanent Premium Vinyl. You can also use FDC vinyl as well. Um, the old Cricut vinyl, you don't want to use that because... It's, it doesn't have the same quality as this does. Um, plus, I found that the old vinyls, they kind of cut up poorly on the mats on any machine. So they have definitely improved with their premium vinyl, and I love it. So we're going to go ahead and use a piece of this. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So I'm logged on to my iPad, and I don't use my iPad a whole lot for designing. I usually use my laptop. But because I don't have Windows 8 still on my laptop, I'm going to go ahead and use my, um, my iPad. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get into your canvas. And if you have multiple machines like I do, make sure that your machine selection is selected to Joy. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and upload our design from the library. And we have that there. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and remove any of the negative space. So we're going to go ahead and click remove. I'm going to tap on that. And that's what my image looks like there. So I'm going to hit next. Okay, and then you have these options down here where it says despeckle or smooth. I'm going to go ahead and hit smooth. It just smooths, smooths everything out. Tap smooth. Did I do it already? I think I did or there we go okay so we're gonna hit next and we want to use the cut image so this is the one that we want to insert so we're gonna hit save oops we have to name it this is my sewing heartbeat I've been doing a ton of sewing mainly masks but I have moved on 
Thankfully, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to be done after making over 100, 150 masks. And then I made this cute little pouch, but this will be featured in another video. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit my upload image. Um, insert down here. Fabulous. Now that's quite large. My glass is really tiny. So we're going to go ahead and hit edit. And we want to change the width. And I think... You know what? I did two and a half as a... Whoa. What happened there? It skewed my image. Let's go undo. Undo that. Undo that. Uh, let's just make it small here. Ooh, why is this unlocked? Did I accidentally touch that somewhere? We want to make sure that that's locked so your image doesn't get skewed like that. We're actually... You know, I did a test cut... This was a size two, two inches. But then when I put this against my cup, it looks quite small. So then I went to, I tried it, and I did a two and a half, but that's still too small. So we're gonna go to three inches on the width. And it's locked, so perfect. But we're gonna expand it for tutorial purposes so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so in order to create your decal for glass etching, you want to put a box behind here because what we're going to remove from the box is this actual image. We're going to weed this out, and that's what's going to be transferred onto the glass. So let's go ahead and insert a shape. We want to insert a square, okay? And then on the square, let's minimize that. We want to go ahead and unlock it and kind of like fit it right behind our image. So now what we want to do is we want to move it to the back. Oh, arrange. Send to back. So now we want this box to be a little longer and then right there. So I have enough space behind, around the corners of my image to tape off with the masking tape. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and highlight both of the pieces. Okay, everything is highlighted. So now we want to go ahead and attach it. Um, is that action? It is. We're going to hit attach. And so the thing that we're going to weed out is the sewing machine heartbeat. So we're going to go ahead and hit make it. We're going to go on the mat. I have my little six inch mat ready to go. Um, mirror is off. You don't want to mirror your image when you're glass etching. You only want to do that for like iron ons. So we're going to hit continue. Okay. Oh, let me cut out my, my piece of vinyl. And then we're going to use premium vinyl. Okay. And let me cut this out. Okay, I'm gonna lay it on my mat here. I know I didn't cut it all perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Just as long it's within my cutting lines. So we're gonna go ahead and load that. Now it's checking to see if the mat is aligned, which it looks like it is. So now we wanna hit go. And it's going to cut out the image. Isn't she so cute? She looks like she's coming at us with them scissors, though. I love Alexander Henry fabric, by the way. All right. So that has become my recent obsession is his fabric. And he's got some amazing fabric. All right. Okay, so this is not that much of a detailed or big image, so that looks like it's done. So we're going to go ahead and hit unload, and then we're going to take this off our mat. All right, we're going to move that out of the way. Okay, so as you can see, let me put it up close here. You can see, or maybe not, that there's an image there. It's not coming up really close on here, but let's go ahead and I'm going to, I don't like wasting anything, but I'm going to save the right side of that. And then we're going to weed 
around the box. We don't want to take that box, which looks like a weeding box. We don't want to remove that box. That's the actual decal. So let's go ahead down here and we're actually going to remove the design. So this is the part that we're weeding. There's my sewing machine and there's my heartbeat. So now this is our glass etching decal, okay? So I'm gonna pick this up with um, my favorite contact paper, which I find contact paper to be the, the easiest as far as I have some scraps in a little jar here. So we're going to go ahead and cut this down to size, mm, about half. And you can get contact paper at Joanne Fabrics. I think it's usually $9.99, but you can get it for less than that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove the contact paper. It's just like a transfer sheet, so you just want to remove the backing. Um, if I can see... Perfect. All right. So let's see if we can get up close a little bit. Sorry, guys. Should have just left the camera where it was. All right. So now we just want to go ahead and apply this to the decal. Be careful not to damage your decal when you're burnishing it. All right. So now the easiest way that I find to uh, remove the decal is to turn it upside down and then remove the backing. Pulling it up from the top sometimes doesn't lift it right away, but the contact paper, if you flip it over and then do it that way, you're good to go. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy paper towel and then my rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to clean my glass real quick. Let's see, I'm right-handed, so I don't need to clean the inside, but sometimes I do. Okay, so I'm right-handed, so I want my image to be on the outside, so I can unfocus now, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So we're going to do... Clean this off with rubbing alcohol nicely and let that dissipate real quick. All right, so you kind of want to just eyeball it. That's going away, going away. Perfect. So sometimes I actually like to use my masking tape to kind of use that as leverage to hold my glass down so I can go ahead and apply my decal sometimes I lay it flat down here and then I squat in front of my table and then just eyeball it that way which I think I'm gonna do that so you may not even see me doing that but you'll see the decal go on all right super cute so all right so I have it sitting on the glass so I'm gonna go ahead and burnish from the center and then I'm going to go outwards. Now, I etched some wine glasses for the girls at Bernina recently. And those were a little hard to uh, put on only because the glass was a little more round. This cup is kind of flat. So with the wine glasses, they had more curvature on the side. So those were a little challenging. So with curves, you kind of want to snip into the vinyl without getting close to your decal and then applying the, the vinyl. Now what I also like to do, other than burnishing it onto the cup, it looks crooked, but it's not. It's just the curvature on there. Um, what I also like to do is I like to put a little heat on the glass as well just to kind of get the adhesive activated behind the decal. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of heat. That'll activate the adhesive on the back a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so that's enough heat. So now I'm going to let that cool off a little bit and then I'm going to burnish it again because I want to make sure that there's no bubbles by the heartbeat or anywhere around the image because if you have bubbles, the etching solution can and will go underneath those bubbles and go beyond your image. You don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and burnish it a little more right by the edges of where I'm at here. Okay, so that I think is on there pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off my contact paper. And you see it's nice on there. There's no bubbles whatsoever. The only bubble I do see is down here, but it's nowhere near my image. There you see it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and tape off this entire thing. And I like to double up my tape too when I'm doing this. And you wanna make sure you don't cover up your image, but you wanna get as close as possible to the edge of your design. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape this off um, completely. I'm gonna do it off camera so I'm not wasting too much time. And then we're gonna come back. All right, so my glass is completely taped off, as you can see. All right, I got a nice amount of masking tape all the way around here. So we're just gonna lay that here. And then real quick, if you do have etching solution that you have been using for quite a while, this stuff, this is the big bottle, it lasts a long time. I like to open it over my garbage can because the particles that dry around the lid, they will fall all over the place. So, you know what? I didn't shake it. I like to shake my etching solution before I open it. Okay. Fabulous. And you want to make sure that all your devices are away from your etching solution. As you can see on my iPad a long time ago, I got a little bit of etching solution on there. Thankfully, it wasn't on the screen. But you want to keep your cell phone, your devices, your laptops, your iPads and tablets and all that good stuff away from the etching solution. So what I like to do, instead of just like rubbing it on, I like to dip my brush in here. And then I like to kind of just lay the solution right on top of the design. This way, if it's just laying right on top of there, you have a nice thick layer. A lot of people always say, wow, yours looks so good, but every time I do my uh, etching, it doesn't come out very long, good. But you don't want to brush it in. You want to have it sitting on top of the, the image like that, nice and thick. Sometimes in the cold weather, you'll also get these little, you see that little piece, looks like a piece of ice. You want to remove those from your images because those will leave little ghost spots on top of your image. You don't want to have that. Sorry, I'm probably completely out of frame, but you kind of get the gist of this. So you want to just lay the solution on top of your image and make sure you get all the corners. I know my camera's not focusing that well. I'm sure that'll be the next comment. You're not focused. I know some people are just so nice with their 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 comments, and some people are just rude about it. You know, my my daughter was like, "Mom, why are you getting, you know, so mad about?" It? And I was like, "You know, people could just be nice about things." You know, I know the the volume wasn't the best. I'm aware. And I'm sure if someone watched the video, they look at other people's comments so they know that someone already commented that the volume wasn't great on the first video. But, you know, stuff happens. I'm not perfect. And here's take two. So we're going to go ahead and let this sit and cure. I'm not going to videotape that. 
I will come back once it's completely finished. I like to rinse off my brushes right away with cold water. And when I'm actually rinsing this off, this is going to sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. As you can see, the entire image is covered with etching solution. And there's just a nice thick layer just sitting on top of it. Again, if you see any of those little... Those little... Uh, they look like little pieces of ice. Um, you want to make sure that you remove those because they will create little ghost spots on your finished image and you don't want that. It's not cute. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off with cold water. Oh, so what I was saying is that when I rinse this off, I leave the tape on there. Make sure you leave your tape on when you're rinsing off the rest of the solution because in case some of the solution gets on the side of your glass, you don't want that to etch into that spot. So leave the tape on. And I like to take off everything. I rinse it off and rub off the etching solution under running cold water. In my brain, somehow I think that if it's hot water, <laughs> it's still activating the solution. That's just my brain. It's not what it says in the instructions, but that's just how my brain works. And so um, I like to rinse everything off with cold water. And then once I've rubbed off all the etching solution, then I start to remove the tape under, and the water is still running. So until I'm completely done removing the decal and the tape and the solution, um, that's when I stop running the water and then I dry it off with a paper towel. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video and then we will come back in about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I will rinse this off and then I'll show you what the final product looks like. All right, guys, so it's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, it's starting to dry up just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and still leave this on here for a little while, but you know what? Actually, I'm going to catch that bit that's slowly rolling down because I don't want that to uh, interfere with my glass. So let me grab another brush. So you want to make sure that... None of that is sliding anywhere. And it looks like I might have a little uh, crystal right there at the tip of my sponge. So I'm going to dip into there. And it doesn't look like it. So right now we're pretty much good to go. So we're going to go ahead and let this sit for a little longer. And then I will come back with an update. All right, guys, so towards the end, what I like to do after it's been sitting for a while, I do like to brush it around my image. Now that it's been sitting there for a while, I do like to kind of like brush it on. But the majority of the etching is going to come from all that stuff sitting on there. So I'm just going to brush it for a couple seconds here. And I think this is almost pretty much done etching. So you can see it kind of looks, the etching solution looks a little dry. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I've rinsed everything off and I've pulled off all the tape so let's take a look and see what this looks like oh it's looking good make sure that if you use paper towels to rest your brushes on that you don't use that paper towel to wipe your glass get a new paper towel these cups are actually from Ikea when Ikea was open um, all right so here is the finished image let me Get this off my tripod real quick and there it is there's my sewing image how pretty so you can see it's very prominent in color at the very top you'll see a little mark up there that's the adhesive that I was talking about from my masking tape so I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol on my paper towel and get some of this uh, sorry you can see my mess of fabric that I was working with um, so yeah so there it is and hopefully the volume on this video 
was suffice for most of you. So thanks for watching. And again, if you can do this on your Cricut Joy, you can do this on your Explorer, and you can also do glass etching decals with your Explorer Air 2 and your maker and any die cutting machine that you have. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.